What's up beautiful people? Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Audrey and this is Then Came What I Done, a space that I created to share my experiences. Mom life we like. So today's video is actually a response to an email I received from one of you wonderful followers. I'm just going to read it and then we're going to talk about it. Hi Audrey, congratulations on the birth of your baby girl. I have been following you for a while now because I too have a small family and my husband and I are thinking about moving abroad and probably having a second baby while living outside of the U.S. What made you decide to give birth in Honduras instead of going back to New York? I am undecided and need some advice. This topic is a conversation that I've been having with so many different people since I began having children during this uh, bi-coastal journey of mine. And um, just to clarify for those of you who are just now following me, I have three children. It's something that I never really thought about until I got pregnant. So naturally for babies one and two, I had them in New York because that, that was my comfort zone. It's what was familiar to me. But by the time baby number three came, I was like, shoot, I, I ain't new to this. I'm not new to this. This is number three. We're going to have this baby right here. Yeah. Let's, let's get straight into the solid reason about why I made that decision. Number one is what I like to call the 2020 factor. So 2020 has been a different year for everybody worldwide. And I think what most people realize is that there's so much more to life to enjoy things than just material things. And with all the deaths that happened, just the world changing and being in chaos, the whole world was put into a situation where, where you had to think like, well, where am I gonna quarantine for months? And knowing that, or not knowing if the borders in the country that you're living in was gonna open or close. And my family and I are used to moving around. Sometimes my husband, he travels without me or I travel without him or we go together. And we've been, that's what, that's how our life has been for the past, since we got married. And so for the first time, it's like, okay, it's, are we going to be together? Are we going to be apart? And I'm going to just stay where my family is. I just want to be with my husband and my children. And I'm going to give birth here in Honduras. So so that we can all be together. 2020 definitely made me love harder and value family even more. Because so after making the decision to give birth because of what my heart and spirit was feeling, I double checked with my doctor to make sure I was healthy. So the number two reason why I decided to give birth here is because my health, thank God my health and my baby's health was, we were good. I went to all of my prenatal checkups. I even did extra blood work, extra urine work, just to make sure that everything was okay, you know? So by the time I was 22 weeks pregnant and the doctor is like, okay, you're good, the baby is good, that was when I made my final, final decision because if something was wrong, then I was, I was still within that window to be able to travel to New York if I needed any special attention or any special care. Reason number three, I wanted a more natural experience. So although I didn't use the epidural for baby one or number two or number three, <laughs> I didn't like the fact that I was tied down to a hospital bed with an IV and I was so restricted. Like I couldn't even walk around. So my 12 hours of laboring with babies one and two, I was on my back on the hospital bed. Like they, even for me to just go to the bathroom, they were like, oh, be careful because we don't want your baby to fall out. And the hospital is, is, is afraid of lawsuits. And I'm like, all right, it, it's just very uncomfortable to labor the traditional western american way and it's great for someone who's high risk because you need to monitor so many things but in my case i wasn't high risk with number one especially now with babies number one and two i was healthier than i was with baby number three so i could have labored without being connected to all these things and that's how my labor experience was i was the only blood they took was to just the normal blood work before you give birth to make sure everything is okay, but I didn't have an IV in my arm or nothing. 
Uh, by the way, if you didn't see my birth story, I already filmed that video. I'm going to put a link in the description box below so you can go ahead and watch and that one. So too. the natural experience that I, that I wanted wasn't only during the laboring experience, but it was also with my postpartum care. See, I'm Garifuna. Garifuna has have some traditional postpartum care that I've always, I've always wanted to experience. But it's kind of hard to experience that nowadays if you're not in the actual village. So my husband and his wonderful sisters, my sister-in-laws, from the time they found out I was pregnant, they were like, oh, you know, you got to do this. And now you got to get this. You got to drink this tea. You got to buy these oils. You got to buy these herbs. And they were on it. So I was super excited for the postpartum care because I knew it was going to be that ancestral experience that I've always wanted to have. And that's exactly what it was. I, I'm going to do a video for all of you mamas and mamas-to-be. Let me tell you something. Your, your bounce back, or you know how people talk about, oh, I'm, you know, I'm a snap back, I'm a bounce back. Like that whole bounce back, snap back thing is more mental emotional and spiritual before you get to the physical part women go through so much so much after giving birth to a child i'm trying to get rid of these love handles too and wear my bikini soon i'm working on it but at the same time i'm basically two months postpartum now and i feel like i'm a year postpartum compared to my first two pregnancies like, I feel so good. My body feels so good. I'm ready to, to work out. I feel, I feel like, I feel 10 years younger. And I know that has everything to do with my postpartum care. So, ladies, um, if you want to know more about my postpartum care, I'm actually recording some things because I want to share with you. It's such useful information thank god i was able to experience this on what i can share with my daughters and my granddaughters and my sisters and my cousins so i'm going to share with you with y'all too don't forget to subscribe so you can be alerted when i pop up that video about my traditional garifuna postpartum care my last reason for making this decision to give birth in honduras is overcoming the fear of the unknown i don't like making decisions based on fear i feel like those actions never result in anything good it doesn't help you to grow as a person and my decision to give birth with babies one and two was because i was scared other people put their fears on me and i was also ignorant ignorant to Honduran care, Honduran health care, because most people only know the negative side of it, you know, everyone is like, oh no, you're going to die, like, it's third world, and let me tell you, I, I went to several doctors here on the island, most of my prenatal care was done with a local Radan doctor, OBGYN, Miss Amanda Everett, and she's, she's, she's the truth. And I even went to the mainland and I saw different doctors. The only thing is that depending on where you go, you can have a good doctor, but the hospital or clinic could be lacking updated technology. But for the most part, my health care has been really good. Mostly if you don't have any complications, which thank God neither me nor my children, children have. People so. will be like, oh, but they're not going to be American. Listen, I'm an American citizen. So in the country of Honduras, an American citizen who gives birth to a baby in Honduras, the baby is considered American as well. All I have to do is apply for her American papers, which we are, of course, in the process of doing. All of those fears about health care and, and paperwork, I got rid of it by looking for information. And, so and my advice to anybody who's thinking about giving birth abroad is to number one health care is number one so definitely do your research about the clinics and the health care system um health insurance definitely do your research and if it's possible get to know the doctors or a doctor and i would also say to have a plan a and plan b birth plan um in my case my plan a was to go to the hospital but my plan B was to give birth at home. So I got connected with a midwife and a doctor 
I had everything I needed to give birth at home just in case because you never know. I was living on the mainland in the country during the rain season and sometimes when the weather gets really bad, you can't even cross over to the other side because the rivers are, over, are overflowing. So just get to know the place that you're going to be and also do your research about immigration in that country. Um, dual citizenship, how that process will be. Don't let, don't let anxiety take you over because of lack of information. Just do your research and go with your gut. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I got some really good material coming out for 2021. I'm going to be doing some vlogs. I got some people asking me, oh, if you want to see them vlogs. So it's kind of hard to vlog with three small children. <laughs> But I'm going to do it for y'all, okay? So subscribe to my channel, like this video, share, comment, all that good stuff. Adios. Later, y'all.